We are a profoundly social species. And it turns out that different parts of the human brain are involved in different aspects of social cognition. Poker is the quintessential social cognition game. It's all about figuring out what other people know, what they're trying to do, what they know about what I know. It's all reading minds. And it's that ability to read other minds and to read body language um, that's the core deficit in autism. People on the autism spectrum have trouble doing the kind of social thinking that comes so naturally to most of us. And that's very debilitating because the essence of our daily lives is interacting with other people. One of the truly unusual and striking things about autism is that it's extraordinarily heritable and among common diseases and disorders that afflict the human population, it is about just about the most heritable. Autism is a complex disorder that can have effects from mild to severe. To really understand it, we need to study it at many levels. That's why this is a great project for MIT, is we have expertise at all these different levels. One problem requiring study at many levels is a mutation on the 16th chromosome. Called 16P112, this mutation can delete over 25 genes and is one of the most common causes of autism. Number one had one repeat that was a little hard to, oh, hard to discern. Hard to discern. Yeah. And then number two had one ambiguous base. Yeah, let me just better. This does seem to be we have a vision to build a community of researchers around autism. It was clear that this was a new major genetic factor for autism. We can ask how do neurons function differently, how does the brain function differently in the face of these mutations. We're looking at behavior. We're measuring people's ability um, to do a variety of language tasks because it seems that language is one of the common things that people with 16P deletions struggle with. I'm not at all convinced that if I hadn't been surrounded by people who are so passionate about trying to understand autism that I would have necessarily gone into this area. But I'm very glad that I did because I feel like it's a, it's a great puzzle that we must solve. You have to put this down, okay? It's cool though. Individuals with a deletion on the 16th chromosome, they all have problems with speech production. We're measuring their cognitive abilities, particularly focusing on language. We'd like to start with a game called Silly Words, which is a little silly, but the computer basically says silly words, and then uh, you have to repeat them as best as you can. They're characterized by what is uh, referred to as the childhood apraxia of speech, um, which is a problem with um, articulating sounds, producing words that have that require you to move your tongue and lips around very fast. Ba, ma. Ba, ma. Good, good, good. Ma, da. Ma, da. With short fragments uh, of speech, they can repeat them just fine. Once you go at three and above, they just can't seem to hold on to that trace of speech to be able to reproduce it. Ti, ba, da, short. Ti, chai, da, so. And holding on to little bits of speech is kind of pretty important for high-level language as well because when we listen to, um, when we interact with uh, people, you know, there is a stage at which we basically just preserve that trace and then we kind of recover the meaning from it. And uh, a lot of them seem to have speech problems. One notion I'll introduce in a little while is um, this notion of a childhood apraxia of speech. So this is a developmental disorder which characterizes these kinds of articulatory problems and people have to come up with some criteria for, you know, what pushes you into that category. Each of us talks about the data we just collected last week. Spontaneous meetings that come up as a part of this project are really things that we look forward to because they take us out of our own box. And even though each of us uses very, very different methods, it's fun and informal and we all have relevant comments for each other. I can tell you that the conversations are not always easy because we really think about things differently. If you have hypotheses about your own data, then you should figure out 
how you best want to carry that data forward. The purpose of the project is really to merge all of our domains of expertise in a way that is much more than any of us could do individually and much more than we would even do individually if we just did our own studies and threw the data out to each other. I am confident that over time we're going to appreciate one another <laughs> and uh, each person will be making a really important contribution. Jim Simons believes that we need the best people anywhere to work on autism if we are going to make progress on solving autism. Today about 45 MIT faculty devote some component of their research to autism or to the social brain and its disorders. And that is up from zero about 10 years ago. I never hesitate to walk down the hall or go to another building and knock on the door of someone uh, who works on a different area uh, to ask them a question or to ask to collaborate. And everyone always responds very positively. A technology that we have recently developed uh, is called genome editing. And what this technology allows us to do is to be able to make mutations and put that into a mouse or to a primate. And these kinds of uh, breakthrough technologies is what uh, makes it possible uh, to push the frontiers of autism research. The last decade has been the decade of being able to read out the genome and that this coming decade is really going to be the decade of writing the genome. We're able to go in like as you do in say uh, Microsoft Word and actually make changes to it. It's just a whole other type of science that you can do and the possibilities really uh, with these tools are endless. It was clear from my interactions with Jim that he did not expect an easy or a quick fix, but that he did expect deep inquiry into the basis of the human brain and mind with an eye on autism. And that has been our driving force. If you get enough smart people together in a room trying to tackle a common problem, um, you're going to succeed. And um, we have a lot of smart people here.